Hey, it's Russell, how's it going? Welcome to this video. We are gonna be making a beautiful portobello meatloaf with a tomato, a balsamic tomato paprika sauce to go on the top. It's gonna to be wonderful, stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we need to um, turn these portobello mushrooms and these red peppers into something a little bit more special. So we're gonna chop them up, we're gonna cube them, we're gonna marinate them really simple, just some lemon juice, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of uh, olive oil and some salt. We're gonna bring them all together and then we're gonna dehydrate them for a few hours to get them ready for um, the main event. Okay, so first thing we need to do with these red peppers, um, we're just gonna push the stalks in like that. Um, let's create a little bit of order here, put these to the side. Um, push the stalks in like that. And then we'll go around with a knife. Really beautiful, simple way to get the stalks and the seeds out. So now we're gonna cube these. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything special because these are gonna be um, ground down or at least processed to a certain degree in a food processor um, into the meatloaf itself. So we're just gonna cube them roughly, transfer them into the bowl. Now we're gonna do something similar with the mushrooms. So we've got 250 grams of mushrooms. I've put the recipe for this below, the link to the recipe. So we've got it in uh, US and UK uh, measurements. So you're gonna start off with about 250 grams of mushrooms. Then we're gonna take the, the stalks out here, turn them over, and I've already given these a wipe down with a wet towel. Um, and then we can uh, cube those about the same size as we did the red peppers. Next, we're going in with some lemon. So about three tablespoons, which is usually about one, uh, one lemon. Bit of salt on here as well. And then we're gonna go in with these garlic cloves. So cut those however you normally do garlic. You can mince them, uh, you can cut them with a knife or you can put them in a garlic crusher or you can do what I'm gonna do, use a microplane. Love this microplane, see how easy that grates that down. And you get all this beautiful garlic underneath. Now I'm gonna bring this over here for the last, last ingredient here, little splurge of olive oil. Let's get that mixed in. Now we're gonna take a dehydrated tray with a non-stick sheet and uh, we're gonna spread this over nice and even and then it's gonna go in the dehydrator and it's gonna go in at 115 degrees for three hours. Now the one that I'm about to show you, I left in there a little bit too long. Happens to the best of us. Great thing is, we're not baking here. This is not an exact science. I'm gonna show you what they look like in a second. They'll be perfectly fine. Okay, here we go. Look at these beauties. So as I said, they're a little bit uh, more broken down than yours are gonna be at 115 degrees for three hours. These went on for closer to five or six hours. <laughs> so um, you can see they're really broken down, but beautiful. Still um, perfectly fine to use and perhaps even a little bit more flavor because we've removed more of the water, right? So we've made the flavor more intense. So I'd recommend anywhere between three and six hours. Um, and then they're gonna be ready to use in the main event, which is the meatloaf itself, which we're gonna do now. Okay, so I've got all my ingredients set up here for the main event, then the main meatloaf. We've got our nuts, which have been soaked um, overnight and then rinsed to make them more digestible, get rid of those anti-nutrients. So we've got almonds, we've got uh, walnuts, uh, we've got half a medium onion, that's actually quite a large onion, but half an onion. We've got some thyme, some sage, we've got some dried mixed herbs, we've got some tamari here, and we've also got some uh, miso, some um, brown rice miso, some kind of dark miso that's gonna give it a real a real nice depth of flavor. Um, you can leave the miso out if you like, and that's a new addition to this recipe, and it's great without it, a little bit more flavor with it in there. And then of course, we've got our beautiful mushrooms and red peppers here. Now we're gonna do this all in the food processor, and I'm working with a, a much smaller food processor than I normally work with, so we'll see how this goes. My, my normal food processor is uh, in for repairs, so let's see. Let's see if it works. We might have to do it in batches, but I think we'll be okay. I'm gonna get these ground down first, mainly because it is such a small food processor. Okay, that's looking pretty good, but volume wise, we're gonna to have to keep our eye on it. So let's put my wet ingredients in here first. So I'm gonna put my tamari in and put my miso in, and then we'll go in with the dry herbs. I'll move my fresh herbs to one side here and we'll work on our uh, onion here. And actually, because we are using this smaller food processor, I'm going to take this onion, um, I'm going to chop this smaller than I would do 
when it's going in the food processor. You can adjust to, uh, to whatever uh, food processor you're using. Okay, that should be good. Let's get that in. Same with the sage. So let's give this a real nice fine uh, slice, fine chop here. It smells, it smells are wonderful. Um, okay, then we'll get a good amount of this thyme here. Okay, let's run the knife through this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, uh, is grind this down again. And then the idea is that we put this in and grind that, but that is definitely going to be too much volume. So we'll have to do it in batches. So let's get this done first. Okay. Yeah, that's about the maximum we can put in this food processor. We'll just give it a scrape down. It's handling it pretty well. We're, we're okay at the moment. So this is going to be good for you if you have got a smaller food processor, a smaller food processor as well. Um, we're going to pop this into a into a bowl here. Then I'm going to add some of this mixture back in. We'll add the peppers and the mushrooms here to break these down with a bit of the mixture, and then we'll combine them both in the bowl. Um, when this is broken down, bring it all together and that will form our loaf. Okay, beautiful. So let's take a look at this. You can see we've still got these flecks of red pepper. Okay, then I'm gonna use a wooden spoon to combine those two. So just as a reminder, if you have got a big enough food processor, to do all this in one go that's the way you want to go with it but this is looking really nice I'll tell you what i'm going to do we're all friends here right i'm going to get in there with my hands do the, do a proper job here okay have a little taste for seasoning at this point those fresh herbs a mm. little bit of miso in there as well bolstering that flavor delightful so another dehydrated tray non-stick sheet let's get this out and onto here. Now what we want to do here, or rather what we don't want to do, is have this be a really thick um, meatloaf because, you know, dehydrating, we're not using temperatures that are actually going to cook the middle of it like a, like a cooker would. So we need to just bring all this together. So as an example, we don't want it really high like that, right? We want it just a little bit lower. It's not going to get dehydrated all the way through anyway. It's still going to be kind of a little bit moist in the middle, which is exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, we want the, the outside kind of drier, um, but we don't want it on the inside. We don't want it, um, you know, crumbly and dry. So if you follow the instructions for dehydration times, that's exactly what you're going to get. Okay, so that's going to go into the dehydrator. Next, we're going to make some tomato sauce. And we're going to make a tomato sauce that is going to reduce down in the dehydrator whilst this is drying. And we're going to bring those two together, do a final stage of dehydration. And, uh, and you'll see the result. So let's work um, on the tomato sauce in the Vitamix next. I've prepped and arranged my tomato sauce ingredients here. You see me cut a pepper, you don't need to, uh, to see me do that again. So we're just going to chug everything in the, uh, in the Vitamix jug here and get it blended up. Then we're going to put it into a bowl and it's perhaps a, a, a bowl that looks maybe a little bit too big. And the reason is we want lots of surface area on the sauce in the bowl um, so that when we put it in the dehydrator, it uh, reduces down quicker. Let's get into it. So we've got our, uh, I like to use baby tomatoes, uh, more flavorful. Then in here, we've got our red pepper, we've got some garlic and we've got some uh, onion there. And then in this one, we've got some balsamic vinegar and we've got some uh, olive oil. And finally in here, we've got some onion powder. Uh, we've got some salt, some smoked sweet paprika. So that's not the spicy paprika. We've got some black pepper and we've got some ground down fennel seeds as well. Lots and lots of beautiful flavor in there when that mixes with the tomatoes and when it mixes with the uh, balsamic vinegar and it reduces down and gets juicy and rich. It's gonna be amazing. Okay, let's get this on the, on the blend. So starting slow, little tip for your Vitamixing, make sure you start slow, uh, get everything broke down, get broken down, get those tomatoes, get the, uh, the peppers broken down. And then once it's kind of moving, then we can turn it up. Make sure we just get those little bits of onion and whatnot from the side. 
and we can turn it up and get it uh, get it smooth. Okay, beautiful. So we'll get this in the bowl. It's quite a, an orangey red at the moment, but as that dehydrates down, it's really going to change colour and get a lot more of a become a lot more of a deep red. So this is going to go into the dehydrator now with the meatloaf and they're both going to go on for 115 degrees at 115 degrees for 12 hours so i'm going to leave it overnight going to come in tomorrow and then we're going to put it all together going to see the tomato sauce will have thickened up so we can spread it on top of the meatloaf then we'll put it back in the dehydrator just to finish it off get that tomato sauce nice and reduced down on top of the meatloaf maybe then brush it with a little bit of olive oil for serving and uh, it's going to be wonderful we're going to serve it with this beautiful cranberry and apple kale salad but all in good time. Let's get this dehydrated and then we'll come back and we'll do that. Okay then, so here we are after 12 hours in the dehydrator. We've got our beautiful nut loaf, um, still moist on the inside, nice crust developing on the outside there. And then we've got our beautiful tomato sauce here as well. So you can see, if I just move this over, that um, where our tomato sauce originally was, it's it's reduced right down. And so it's got, it's got deeper, deeper red color and it's thickened up and it's just about perfect now for um, for spreading onto the top of the um, to the meatloaf. So these bits around the edge here, if you want to get those out, um, if you spread your sauce over those and then just leave them for a little while, that will moisten up that that, uh, that dried tomato around the edge there and you'll be able to scrape it off a little bit easier. But in the name of getting this uh, done as quickly as possible on the video here, I'm just gonna use this um, wooden spatula here to scrape as much off as I can. And then, you know, when you've got more time, you can be a little bit more thorough with it. But it's worth just taking a few, a few moments, even if you do it like this, to get those dried bits around the edge because they've got lots of flavor in. So that'll do us now. Let's bring over the meatloaf and then we can start spreading. Okay, so I'm gonna use this little offset spatula here, but you could just as easily use a, uh, a spoon here, whatever you've got. And if you wanna you want to have the tomato sauce just on top or all the way down the side, it's entirely up to you, or halfway down, just whatever works. Okay, beautiful. There we go, we've got good coverage on that. Okay, excellent. So this is gonna go back into the dehydrator now for about uh, another two to three hours. And um, that's gonna uh, dry this tomato sauce out even more on the top, gonna to make it nice and um, even sweeter and stickier and flavorful. Uh, and then we'll be ready to serve. Here we go then, after another two hours in the dehydrator, we've got this beautiful uh, meatloaf, nut roast meatloaf dehydrated sweet balsamic tomato sauce. I always change the title of it slightly every time I say it without meaning to. Um, beautiful, ready to go, easily, I've said six people. You might squeeze eight in there, I don't know. Six, six is a good amount. Now, I've got this beautiful kale salad here. Uh, I've got a uh, cranberry and apple kale salad. Um, put the recipe for that in the recipe post for this. Actually, I'll put, I'll put the recipe for both <laughs> below. I'll put the links below for both of those. So we're gonna serve it with that, it's beautiful, hearty, um, kale salad, a kale salad. I love a kale salad. Uh, all right, so this is an optional step. I'm just gonna, um, with this pastry brush, I'm just gonna brush a little bit of olive oil over the top here, and we're gonna make this glisten, make it a bit shiny, which really, um, really changes it, really brightens it up. Look at that, so, so satisfying. Of course, you'd only wanna do this, this olive oil um, glaze when you're ready to go, when you're ready to serve. All right, let's get a piece of this cut. So I'm actually just gonna cut down the middle because I wanna, for this plating, I wanna take a middle a middle bit plate here. So yeah, I cut that in half, then I, I've done one, two. Yeah, you could, you could get eight out of this, I reckon. Just depends how hungry people are. Look at that beautiful slice of deliciousness. And then this beautiful kale salad, just in the middle there. And so remember the, the meatloaf here is straight out of the dehydrator, right? So it's warm. What an absolute treat that is. Okay, so of course we've got to try this. Oh yes. 
Oh man. Mm, the fresh herb, the dry herbs. This is like a crumbly, hearty, meaty loaf. You've got the, it's, it's worth spending the extra bit of time doing those portobellos and the, um, the red peppers to put inside the loaf because that's going to give it, um, it just, it stops it just being like a, a dry nut roast. It's got a, it's got a texture to it, um, a, a flavour and, and just a, just a moistness and a, and a festiveness to it that is just so, so enjoyable. Really, really good stuff. I'm not going to eat another piece because right now I'm going to finish this off in a minute. You don't need to see me eating any more. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, all the links are below that you need to get into this. Do leave me a comment and a question if you need to. And like and subscribe if it takes your fancy. If you're not already a subscriber, um, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell if that's your thing and you'll get notified uh, when, when I post new videos. So thanks a lot and I'll see you in the next one.